you will begin the examination with the hose roll. You will find a 50 foot section of 2.5 or 3 inch hose lying flat on the ground. Using any method you prefer, perform a straight roll of the entire section of hose. Then turn around and unroll the hose. The critical criteria for this station are the straight roll must be neat and compact. You must unroll the hose in a generally controlled manner. Pitching of the rolled hose is not allowed. The unrolled hose must lie flat with no kinks or twists. It does not, however, need to be unrolled in a straight line. The next event is the hose drag. You will find multiple sections of 2.5 or 3 inch hose coupled together and placed in an accordion load on the ground. Grabbing the end with the nozzle and using any method you prefer, extend the uncharged hose line 100 feet to the cone in front of you. After passing around the cone, continue to drag the hose back towards the starting position. Place the nozzle down in the square on the concrete where you found it. Leave the remainder of the hose where it lies. The critical criteria for this station are the hose is fully extended for 100 feet. The firefighter passes around the cone. Note the hose itself does not need to pass around the cone. And the working end of the hose and the nozzle are returned to the start point. Station 3 is the ladder carry. You will find a single section ladder hung on a portable rack. Using any method you prefer, remove the ladder from the rack and carry it out to the indicated cone. After passing around the cone, carry the ladder back to and hang it on the rack. The critical criteria for this station are carry the ladder around the cone and back to the starting point, and at no time may the ladder touch the ground. The next station is the rafter crawl. You will enter and ascend the drill tower to the second floor. Here you must climb a short ladder, enter a side wall at a catch, and crawl across the rafters to the wall ahead of you. Touch the wall with the palm of either hand. Crawl back across the rafters and exit the attic, descend the stairs, and exit the training tower. The critical criteria for this event are, you must crawl only on the rafters, and you must touch the far wall with the palm of either hand. After touching the far wall, you may change directions and continue back to the opening in a forward direction, or you may crawl backwards to the opening. Please use caution and use the handrails while ascending and descending the short ladder. Station 5 is the ladder raise. Here you will find a multiple section extension ladder mounted to the side of the drill tower. Using the lanyard and a hand over hand technique, raise the ladder until the fly is fully extended, then lower it back to its original position. There are no rung locks on this ladder. It will not stop or come to rest except in the fully retracted position. You will be utilizing a continuous pull during extension and must be prepared to execute a controlled retraction of the fly section. No dropping or banging of the ladder is allowed. Critical criteria for this station are you must fully extend the ladder, you must return it to the original position, and you must maintain control of the ladder at all times. From here you will proceed to the chopping sled. You will find a sledgehammer and a metal weighted sled that rides on a track. Walking surfaces are built into the apparatus on either side of the sled. While straddling the sled, using a chopping motion, strike the sled as many times as necessary to move it five feet to the end of the track. Your evaluator will let you know when you have reached the end. The critical criteria for this station are you must move the sled five feet along the track using a sledgehammer in a chopping motion. Station number seven is the hose raise. At the entrance to the drill tower you will find a bundle of inch and a half or inch and three quarter hose. Pick it up and ascend to the fifth floor. Once there you will lay down the hose and will see a section of rope tied off in the building and extending out a window over a hose roller. Multiple sections of inch and a half or inch and three quarter hose are coupled together to form a hose line and are attached to the rope. Grab the rope and hoist up the uncharged line until one full section of hose is in the building and the coupling has passed over the hose roller. An assistant will then take control of the hose line. Grab the hose bundle you brought up and descend out of the tower. As a safety consideration, we recommend you utilize the handrails with your open hand while traveling in the stairwell. The critical criteria for this station are you must raise 50 feet of hose and its couplings into the building over the hose roller and you must ascend to the fifth floor of the drill tower and descend to the ground level with a bundle of hose. The last station in the timed events is the dummy drag. You will find a rescue dummy strapped into a dragging sled behind a start line. Using any method you prefer, including the built-in dragging strap, 
either drag or carry the dummy 30 feet to the indicated cone. Both you and the dummy must travel around the cone and return to the starting position. This station does not end until the rescue dummy and attached sled are fully over the start line. The critical criteria for this station are you must drag or carry the dummy approximately 30 feet around the cone and back to the starting point. <laughs> At this point you and the evaluator will return to the apparatus bay where your vital signs will be recorded. You will rest, rehydrate, turn in any checked out personal protective equipment and be informed if you have successfully completed the timed portion of the exam. When you have received adequate rest, you will be escorted to the 100-foot aerial platform. While wearing street clothes, a harness, and a safety rope, you will climb the fully extended length of the ladder at a 75-degree angle. You will then descend the ladder. This is not a timed event. There are no extra points given for speed. Travel up and down the ladder at a controlled pace. Upon successful completion of the aerial climb, you will return to the apparatus bay for final physical agility exam processing. You will also be given instructions on how, when, and where to proceed to the oral interview phase of the hiring process. We hope this video presentation will help to prepare you for the physical agility portion of our hiring process. If, after careful study of this video, you still have additional questions, please feel free to contact us at area code 218-299-5432. Simply speak to whomever answers the call and we'll put you in touch with somebody who can help. There's no substitute for practice when it comes to passing this exam. Simulate the course or individual stations within it as best you can and work to improve your performance, technique, and overall time on the exam. Don't wait till a couple of days before the exam date. Our folks hope that every one of you can pass this exam. We're rooting for you, good luck, and thank you for your interest in joining our family here at Moorhead Fire.